In this session on customizing Power Apps portals, we're going to learn about setting child record values from a parent record. My name is Kurt and I'm Senior Customer Engineer at Microsoft. So let's set the stage. The use case, we're designing a Power Apps portal and on our form, we have a subgrid. And you can see the subgrid below. I've left the label turned on. You can see this is a subgrid control. And when our record is created, we want to pre-populate some values from the parent record. You can see in the image below that there's no pre-populated values. In Dataverse, we can use relationship mappings and a record will pre-populate these fields if we have a create and a model driven app. But in the portal, all we get is this modal pop-up and there's no pre-populated fields. So what's the solution? The solution has two parts. We need to get the values from the parent record. And once we get those values from the parent record, we need to insert them into the form on create. On the left, you can see a web template. We're going to use a web template to get those values from the parent record. And on the right, you can see the JavaScript that we're going to use to take those values off of the form that are hidden and put them into our form. So let's get to the demo. I'm going to show you the app and how it works. Then we'll look at the web template. Then we'll look at the JavaScript and then we'll test it. So here we are. We have a private browsing session open. I'm going to show you every step along the way. We're going to start by going to make.powerapps.com. This is a proof of concept of sorts that I built. I'm going to show you the apps. I tend to like to go to the apps up here on the left. And in the apps, you can see we have a portal. We have a model driven app. And then of course we have our portal management app. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open the model driven app. And we're going to see what the behavior is like when you have mapped fields. In this particular case, we have help desk tickets, contacts, and help desk ticket work orders. So when we go to our help desk tickets, the use case is that we have the help desk ticket, uh, Windows 7 memory requirements, and we have this subgrid down here where we're going to create related work orders. Let's click on the new button for a new help desk ticket work order and it should bring over the subject and the priority of the work order of the ticket sorry so when i click new ticket you can see that it automatically fills in the name the priority shows us what the related ticket is in the work order and then it asks us for some work order notes it's a simple application and the problem that we're going to solve is when we do this in the portal, these fields are not populated. So now let's go back to our make.powerapps.com. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this tab. And if I go to my portal and I click edit, it's going to open the portal studio. And the reason I always want to browse my portal from the portal studio is because when I click this browse button in the portal studio, it clears the cache on the portal. And so I can be sure that caching um, is not going to be a problem. So let's browse the website. Let's see how the application works. So in this portal, we have a page called tickets. It says click on tickets to get started, uh, but there's no tickets. It's because you got to sign in. I've got a access control rule. I'm uh, going to be using Azure AD to sign in. Because I'm already authenticated in this browser, it's going to use the, the user. This is Mr. Reynolds. Uh, you can see I'm an administrator on the portal. I don't think that's important for this demo, but you can see it anyway. So I'll click on tickets. And just like we were looking at our help desk tickets in the model driven app, now we can see the help desk tickets in the portal. And if we want to add a ticket, to our Windows 7 memory, for example. Click the Create button here. 
and you'll see that I'm populating name, priority, and the related ticket. Now let's close this out and let's go back. I'm going to go back to home. I'm going to shut down my portal. Well, yeah, I'll shut down the portal. And now let's go into our portal management studio. That subgrid, again, I'm not going to go into how that's created, but that subgrid pops a basic form. And the basic form is the work order create form. I always recommend that you name your form so you know what they are and what they do. It's much easier to see. Okay, ticket work order create. This is the form. So we go into that form and the JavaScript is on the additional settings tab. We go down to the bottom and this form loads. You'll see we've got some JavaScript in here. So I'm going to take this JavaScript out. It's just easier to take it out than it is to comment it. So let's save this form. And now we've got no JavaScript on the form. Let's go back again. We close the portal down. We're back in our portal studio. We're back here because when we browse, That'll be a cache clearing event. It's likely it's going to recognize that I'm still logged in. Let's go to tickets, Windows 7 memory requirements. And now when I go to create, now the JavaScript is not there. You can see that the form is blank. And this is the, the issue that we're trying to solve. Okay. So now we can go home, we'll close our portal down, and now let's see how we're going to solve this issue. We said first off we're going to need a web template, and we're going to need a web template to populate the information in the background so that we can use JavaScript to grab it. So the form that opens when we go to create is a ticket detail form. The ticket create form is here. And then once the grid is there, we click ticket detail. So the ticket detail form is hosted on a web page. Okay. And this is the help desk ticket web page. So let's go to the help desk ticket web page. So now we're in web pages, help desk ticket create. Again, we've named our pages so we know what they are. Help desk ticket details. Okay. So go to help desk ticket details and you can see that this web page, it hosts our ticket detail form, but it also is using a page template called the help desk ticket full page page template. So in my opinion, the easiest way to get to the web template is to click in the page template and then we'll see this. this is the full page. This is the checkbox that gives us the header and footer, but otherwise this template is what displays our form for us. In the Help Desk Ticket full page web template, you'll see, let's just skip that. You'll see that we have the heading, the breadcrumbs, the title, and then we have the page copy from the web page. And if it's an entity list, we'll show that. If it's an entity form, uh, which is our basic form now, we'll show that. And if it's a web form, which is our advanced form, we'll show that. At the top of this page, we've inserted a couple of things. One, we've inserted this liquid code. And we're not going to go into how this works, but basically we're assigning a variable called my ticket to an entity called help desk ticket and which entity is it it's the entity that has the request parameter of id in the url when i go to tickets when i go to win seven memory requirements you'll see there's something called an id here and that id is the GUID of this record. And the GUID of this record is going to allow us to get the subject and the priority. So let's go back to our web template. So that's where this dot ID comes from. Okay. So when we do that, we have a variable called my ticket and it has the fields that we need. 
In this case, we're going to put in this hidden div, we're going to put a paragraph with an ID of ticket name, and that's going to equal, this is liquid code, you can see the double curly braces, that's going to equal my ticket, which is the my ticket up here, ticket subject, my ticket, ticket priority, my ticket, help desk ticket ID, and then it's going to just have a field called the entity name of the ticket. Now I put this in here to make it easier to understand when you're setting a related field. I'll show you in the JavaScript, but you need that when you set the related field. So we'll just put it here so it's easier. So this is all going to be on the form, but it's going to be hidden. And so we won't be able to see it. But when our create form opens, we'll have access to these variables, ticket name, priority, the ID of the ticket, and the name of the entity for the ticket. So that's the web template and how it works. So the next thing we're going to need is we need the JavaScript. So when this create button opens, it's going to open this form. And this form is a work order create form. Now it doesn't have a web page, it just has a form. Otherwise we could maybe use a template for that. So let's go to our basic forms, ticket work order create form. And the JavaScript is down in this section here. So what we want to do is we want a function that grabs those fields that were hidden. And so this first part of this function is going to let ticket subject equal to the parent window and look for this element called ticket name and get the text out of it. Okay. Ticket priority, same ticket ID and ticket entity. So we're going to take those values and we're going to say, okay, the name is equal to the value that's in ticket subject. The priority is equal to the value that's in ticket priority. And this is the part where when we set a related field, we have to set three fields. We have to have the name, the ID, and the name of the entity. We're not going to go into that now. Um, thanks, Todd Yule, for the suggestion and a blog article to help me understand that. So now we have the JavaScript. When our form opens, it should get these fields off the hidden, and it should slap them into the fields that they belong in. So let's hit save. Save and close. We're going to close the portal that was in the background back to the studio. Click Browse, Tickets, Windows 7 Memory Requirements. Values are now present, but they're hidden on this form. And so when I click Create, the JavaScript automatically populates the subject, the priority, and the related ticket. It sets this lookup field to the ticket that we opened it from. We can enter some work order notes. Let's see if we can get some good memory ideas for our Windows 7 machine. We click Submit. You can see it shows up on our grid. Um, if we click View Details, you'll see that it's all there. And then if we go look at our model-driven app for our work orders, uh, please help me identify some good memory. Uh, you can see that we have all the related fields. That's a related ticket. System owner, I should probably hide that on the field, low priority. Still editable, but you get the idea. So I think we've satisfied our requirements. I think we've tested it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.